Typically, we see this disease pop up in the late summer, and there's actually several viruses that have very similar symptoms that are often lumped together and called blue tongue. Blue tongue is one of them, or one of the groups, but there's also a group of diseases called epizootic hemorrhagic disease. And these are all usually lumped together under a group called hemorrhagic diseases. And they have very similar symptoms. Um, often you'll see deer acting uh, feverish or they have lethargy. They're hanging around water sources. Or they'll have abscesses on their mouth or they'll have a swollen tongue, hence the name blue tongue. Fortunately, this disease is not transmittable to humans. Uh, and while livestock can get it, usually the symptoms are very, very mild, so it's not considered a threat to livestock. So it's, it's really just impacting the deer population. Lots of carcasses, fresh carcasses, in late summer, July, August, or September, or if you see deer hanging around water sources and, the, and they just don't act like they feel very good, they might be uh, sweaty, feverish, or they won't flee when they see you, then you can call your local county conservation officer with ODWC and just report that so that they have an idea of where those outbreaks might be occurring. But beyond that, there's really nothing that a landowner needs to be concerned about. The disease is not a threat to humans. The only issue is if you see a lot of secondary bacterial infections from abscesses around the mouth, you know, that, that animal might not be fit for consumption. But as far as the virus, uh, it's not a threat to a human. Um, you might see lower deer populations for a while. You know, sometimes we'll uh, see up, you know, 25% or even greater reduction in, in animals in, in isolated populations. So it can take a few years before the deer herd recovers from that.